essentially it's they wear a Google Glass and they, they're in their wheelchair and they're able to navigate how they move and maneuver their wheelchair just by their simple head movements of where they look. Exactly, exactly. So the glasses themselves have um, sensors integrated and that, that is a gyroscope accelerometer that's basically a sensor that de can detect movements. And maybe to start from, from the other side, like prior to our solution, what happened when people couldn't use their hands anymore, Normally with the wheelchair, you'd have a joystick and control it with that joystick, right? With your hand. But since you cannot move the hands, what happens is they take the joystick and they put it in front of somebody's chin or they, they build like buttons around your head and then you have to use your head and push against the buttons or against that joystick in front of your mouth. And you can imagine wow. it's like huge, like mechanical builds uh, on top of the wheelchair. And it's kind of also limited. So people have to adapt to that joystick to that way of movement instead of the other way around. Welcome to the Phil with Forbes 30 podcast. This is Phil Michaels, Forbes 30 under 30 entrepreneur and performance coach. Every year, Forbes names the top 30 entrepreneurs, leaders, and stars in the world. And each week, I bring you one of them to help you level up in your life and business. From celebrities like LeBron James to Kylie Jenner and Cardi B, to entrepreneurs with companies like DoorDash, Instagram, and YouTube, you're sure to learn from the list. Thanks for spending time with me today. Now it's time to level up. Level up. Level up. Okay. Welcome to Phil with Forbes 30 Podcast. Today we have a very special guest. He founded Manivo in 2018 after his studies at TU Munich, Germany. Monivo empowers people with disabilities by using a new technology. People that are impaired by diseases like ALS, multiple sclerosis, muscular dystrophy, etc., or accidents, spinal cord injuries, might not be able to move or are limited with their legs and hands. With Monivo's drive, they can now steer steer their wheelchair just by using their head movements. In 2017, he made the Forbes 30 under 30 Europe list in the category of science and healthcare. Since 2018, he has joined the Global Shapers Munich, an initiative by the World Economic Forum to support social product projects. Please welcome Claudio. <laughs> Hi everyone. Hi Phil, how are you? Very excited to have you here, Claudio. It's great to see your face again. Our Claudio and I met in some of the Forbes events that we've been on together in Israel and we've been to Amsterdam together and, and him and I very, uh, very much grew close to each other because him and a few other German friends became known as my German bodyguards. <laughs> we have these big, brawn, German, muscular guys walking with me everywhere I went. I was very lucky and grateful to have them. So I'm glad we get to reconnect again. You're welcome, Phil. You're welcome. <laughs> it's my pleasure to have you here. Now, I like to start off with where were you when you found out you made the Forbes list? Where was the exact moment? Do you remember that moment? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Uh, I was basically uh, still in our like stealth boat university bunker kind of like office as you would call it in the university right so it was uh it was i think it was already evening and then like i i got the message and i was like holy shit what just <laughs> happened uh, how how did this happen and so on so i was very excited um yeah it was just like a great Great excitement and also like feeling very happy for, for getting this appreciation in the end for all the work that has been like done until that moment. And what did you do to celebrate? <laughs> well, invited all my friends, went out, had a like very nice uh, night out, lots there of drinking and partying. So it was really cool. Good for you. And now it's been a crazy time. You're in Munich, but I know you want to uh, move to New York soon. Um, but during COVID, since it's a crazy time, what are you doing to make the most of this time? Your go-to hack or what's you and your team doing to play offense rather than defense? Right. So 
uh, from the beginning, we were actually like pretty fast in like adapting to the situation. So first of all, like we, everyone was like then able to work from home as a startup and as a small and flexible startup, you're very like easily adaptable to these kind of situations. So that was an easy, an easy take. However, we did it quite fast. Um, and at the same time, within our industry, like most of the people are very traditional. So they, they prefer, you know, those face-to-face -face meetings, um, those sales meetings where you promote the project, the product, the solution. Um, so that couldn't happen anymore because it's actually like we work with people in wheelchairs and they're kind of uh, part of the, the risk group. So we didn't want to take the risk and get mm. people somehow infected or something. Um, so what we did quite, quite, um, quite, easy is then like we switched everything and turn it into a virtual product live demo so our sales reps um somehow found like places i don't know like one guy found a room in a church the other guy found a room in a in a, a gym that was closed because no one was like working out wow. so they took their wheelchairs there and did like live demonstrations from those places <laughs> so really cool and we had great feedback we're actually trying to launch um in different european countries or solutions so for example france was very interested and also the netherlands um where we've been together too um was also really cool feedback from like offering this kind of like way of demonstrating the solution so that people could already like get to know the product get to know the solutions the different features and ask um their questions about it that's awesome. And the place is probably open to it too, because they're doing it for a good cause. They're empowering people and that's exciting. And they might get a, additional exposure for their business or their, their entity. Yeah. Now walk us through how it works. Cause I saw some amazing videos. I, I commend you on a lot of the work you're doing. It's incredible. Essentially it's, they wear a Google glass and they they're in their wheelchair and they're able to navigate how they move and maneuver their wheelchair just by their simple head movements of where they look. Exactly, exactly. So the glasses themselves have um, sensors integrated and that, that is a gyroscope accelerometer that's basically a sensor that de can detect movements. And maybe to start from, from the other side, like prior to our solution, what happened when people couldn't use their hands anymore Normally with the wheelchair, you'd have a joystick and control it with that joystick, right? With your hand. But since you cannot move the hands, what happens is they take the joystick and they put it in front of somebody's chin or they, they build like buttons around your head. And then you have to use your head and push against the buttons or against that joystick in front of your mouth. And you can imagine wow. it's like huge, like mechanical builds uh, on top of the wheelchair. And it's kind of also limited. So people have to adapt to that joystick, to that way of movement instead of the other way around. And that's what we did here. Like for example, in the glasses, you can run through a simple calibration that takes 10, 20 seconds. And then you calibrate the, the joystick or the, the smart glass according to your range of movements. Wow. And it can be very sensitive or it can be very like flexible in the end so that you are, have a calibrated solution to drive the wheelchair. That's amazing. And especially <laughs> because it, they feel more free. They don't have this contraption around their head. They're just wearing a simple pair of glasses. And exactly. Now what happens if, let's say, I'm having a conversation with you and I look over to my left, but I don't actually want the wheelchair to move to the left? Yeah. So there are two things. Like The first one is when, you, when you're driving, then you're actively driving, then that's that's uh, that's your movement of the head when you want to stop and make uh, start a conversation with someone you can lock the glass by doing a, a simple gesture that it's like uh, for example three seconds tilting to the left and then it's locked and then you can move your head around freely it's like with the iphone right when you have like the slider and you slide it open or you, you lock it basically. Um, and at the same time, the movements that you have to do in order to, um, to drive the wheelchair left and right are tilting movements. So in the end, for example, if you drive like on a street and you drive at the, like a crossing section, and then you have to look left and right, the wheelchair will not turn left and mm. right because it's, it's this movement. It's the tilting of your head to the left, not the turning the horizontal one. That's so there's smart. a couple of things exactly that like um, help you like conversate, be, um, be secure in like traffic and all of these kinds of situations. And on top of that, we have also multiple algorithms integrated 
um, for example, to detect like falling asleep, to detect like someone like trying to like steal the glasses and taking it oh, off wow. quite quickly. So all of that is like already inbuilt. Seems like you thought of everything. Was there a time when you had created your first version or your second version and there was a crazy story where something happened? You're like, oh, we didn't think of that. We need to implement that into our product. Well, that will, <laughs> there were actually many iterations, you know, like you as a startup, you always like run with your prototype to the to the next like person, ask him and there was always feedback. And that's the good thing that happened to us because from the beginning, we were working with people in wheelchairs here in Munich, um, in our local community and so on. And it's actually through them that we got to develop such a great solution that is actually not like developed around them, but with them mm. together because they, they were so inspired. Inspiring, yeah. They become they, they part of the us... decision-making process, the creative exactly. process. And they were so inspired, which again inspired us and motivated us so much because, like, they they were asking, "Can you do that? Can you like uh, control this with this?" And like, in the end, it was really like built with them. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I can't wait to hear more about that. We're going to dive in deeper. But take us back to the very beginning, where you're from, where you grew up, and and how you got to the path you're on now, and and then eventually making it to the Forbes list. Sure, yeah. So um, I'm originally born in Romania. And when I was seven years old, my mom, my brother and I uh, migrated to Germany. At that time, it was uh, after the revolution in Romania. So um, there was not a lot of like jobs, the prices were high and so on. And my mom had a friend in Germany. So she decided to to take us over there to like, yeah, give us a, a better chance in some, uh, somehow. So I went there to school. I, I graduated with uh, a bachelor and a master in computer science and business administration. Um, I was traveling also quite a lot. I did some. St I studied in the U.S. I studied also in Australia, and um, finally, during my studies, this is where where it all happened. Um, during the master's course that I took, uh, we had the chance, the opportunity to be one of the first universities to get our hands on Google Glass. At that time, it was like still very new, very exciting. Um, and we were given the task to create something around how to improve mobility. And one of my, one of my project members at that time, um, when he was 18, he did a, his civil service in a home for disabled people. Um, and mainly there were only people in power wheelchairs driving around with those, you know, joysticks in front of their chin or like buttons. And that's how we got the idea in the end to create the solution um, that is now Munivo Drive. And, and like I said, like we went out from the beginning, we talked to people in wheelchairs and they were so inspiring to us. Like we, we met with people that couldn't move anything but their head and they were drawing portraits with their mouth. It's purely amazing and so inspiring when you when you talk to these people and you understand that they're not really disabled. They're really more mm. able than some other persons. <laughs> yes. It seems right. like you you've come a long way. And where how many countries are you in now? Well, so right now we're in Germany, Austria, Switzerland. Um, wow. operative and by operative I mean the product is integrated into the healthcare system, which means that in the end the persons um, in the wheelchair don't have to pay for it. It's 100% reimbursed by the healthcare insurance or by the healthcare uh, institution that is uh, governing there. And that's what we aspire to do with all the other European countries and obviously throughout the world. So right now we're in the middle of launching France and Netherlands and also have already like some operations in the Scandinavian region. Wow. Um, and we were actually also planning to like launch in the US this year, but like Corona, um, <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully delayed us a bit. <laughs> after our audience hears this amazing message, they're going to want to help you get into the US and expand as quickly as possible. So what happens if, I mean, this sounds like a no brainer, like everyone who has a wheelchair should simply use this technology. What's a reason that it's not currently being used or why would someone have a wheelchair that uses that old technology or a joystick? And is it because maybe they already have one and once you're allotted one, you're not allowed to upgrade? So, so basically there are like se not several reasons, but the most the reasons that we encounter so far are ones where persons have been using this chin control, for example, for 10, 20 years straight. 
mm. um, and they're kind of used to it. Still, they like the the kind of like features. So, for example, like you have integrated in the smart glass a camera to allow you to take pictures of your surroundings, then share it with your friends and family. So this is something that sometimes they like feel still reluctant and like they they fight with themselves, right? Um, but then there's also one of one of the big challenges that we face is this um, whole reimbursement systems. Every European country has a dis- different reimbursement system. The U.S. has a different one. So we need to get everybody on a table and discuss with them and like teach them that there are so many features integrated in this class. And at first, it's it's a pre- premium solution, so it does cost more than just the hardware that you put in front of your face. That's obvious. However, over the course of time, you can really save uh, a lot of costs also for the healthcare system because the glass can be taken um, and can be reused multiple times. Whereas Mm. the other ones, um, the chin controls, sometimes also from a hygienic point of view, you cannot really reuse them or you cannot adapt it to every new wheelchair. For us, the glass connects to a wheelchair with a developed, um, self-developed adapter. We can connect to any kind of power wheelchair within five minutes. So you don't need to build anything mm-hmm. or like you just plug a cable in, that's it. Wow. So it's it's part of what we're trying to do right now is also kind of educating the healthcare system and like letting us like um, help them to also look at the broader range because most of the time they're very limited in like looking like year after year after year with their budget. But if you look at it over a period of time, then this is a no brainer. However, like we're still like in the process of like helping them understand that. That's exciting. I I hope it comes to the U S I feel a lot of people can benefit from it. And you mentioned one obstacle of overcoming this insurance and, and reimbursement issue. What's another challenge or obstacle or maybe um, a failure or apparent failure that later set you up for success? And how did you overcome that? Um, so first, I think one of the major challenges that we faced from the beginning was we, we created that prototype and we were like, we're all like coming from different like areas, but none of us was really like from the medical area. Um, And we had no clue about like how to bring a product to market, especially because it's a medical product. So for medical products, the the challenge is that you have to have a certification. You have to do certain tests. You have to do clinical evaluation and all of that. And we were like completely lost. It took us also over one year to get this product certified because we did it like very, very in detail. We did a medical, um, a clinical evaluation, a real clinical study with ethical approval and with all things around that. And to be honest, we were just very lucky because we had a really good network covering us from the university side and from the university side, you also had the university hospital, which also helped us then with the clinical study. So all of that and also our mentors were a great support in that time um, since they were having more experience than us. And we were like, just really like working our asses off and trying to like, yeah, day and night understand the medical product certification. Um, but finally we, we made it. That's amazing. And that actually segues perfectly into mentors, coaches, who are the most pivotal people in your life to help you to where you are now? Um, first, and coach, foremost, it's the, first and foremost, I would say it's the team. And then we were lucky enough. From Good answer. The, Good answer. From, <laughs> <laughs> from, the, from the very first moment when we started in university, we had like this uh, startup coaches there, right? So they were helping startups to get started and they were also helping startups to find like mentors with real life experience um, in the, in that area. And we were very lucky enough to find a mentor um, and he has been guiding us since 2016 from the very early on uh, stages to really be more doing. It was like one of the best, I think, advices and he's still like giving us that advice to like, just do it, just fail fast and learn from that experience and integrate it and iterate and iterate um, and don't think too much. And that was, I think one of the, 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 yeah. uh, Defining like advices (laughs) in that. Yeah, Cause uh, sometimes you can get caught in that academic world where you're just research, research, research. We got to figure out everything and you end up in analysis paralysis where you're doing so (laughs) much planning, 
so much research. Exactly. But if you just get out there in the market and get your users testing it as quickly as possible, you're getting faster feedback. So you're failing faster. You get iteration exactly. number two, this iterative design thinking approach and just make multiple versions as you get it out in the hands. And then those people become the champions of your product or service. Exactly. Because now yeah. they want you to win. They're a part of the decision-making process. They're a part of the creative process. And now they're rooting for you to make an even better product and they're going to help you do it. Exactly. That's so true. So you still keep in contact with him and he's still one of your mentors or coaches. He's actually one of our investors right now. So <laughs> that, that, Hey, look, that's even better because that they saw firsthand you go from not having much to growing the company into multiple countries and the fact that he was able to witness your success and your hard work ethic, he's now like, listen, I'm willing to put my own money into this because these guys are so good and, and this team is so good. Yeah, yeah. Good, good for you. So what's, I always think about gratitude and how do you give back to those people and never forget where you started, whether it was your parents or the people, the very first co-founders, how do you give back? What's something, what's the coolest or most creative, unique way you or someone else has shown gratitude for someone? Any cool stories? Um, well, there are multiple. I'm already like, so maybe coming back from the history where, where it all started, like I was always thinking that I will become a consultant with, I don't know, one of the top tier consultancies and will travel the world and do all of that. But everything like started to, to be different as soon as like I was introduced to like meet all of these people and like listen to all their, their stories. And at some point it made like somehow click. And from that moment on, everything in me like switched from like being a consultant to really trying to to create an impact and help people all around the world. So I'm trying to not only give back with the solution that we're currently developing and more and more uh, feature, adding more and more features, but I'm also like, um, you mentioned it at the beginning, I'm part of the Global Shapers, uh, which is an initiative by the World Economic Forum. And it's a huge community uh, with hubs around every city that you can imagine where we support local initiatives. Um, and here in Munich, for example, we support initiatives for teaching digital skills to elderly people or teaching uh, digital skills to refugees, which is one of my main projects. And I'm doing this already since um, end of 2018. Um, as well as in our community with people with disabilities, we always try to create now kind of a platform and giving them the opportunity to raise their voices and so on. I just like today I talked to this person um, that is drawing portraits with, with uh, her mouth and we want to really like feature her and like trying to bring um, her on the front stage and give her a voice somehow. So mm. there are She's multiple things that we're doing. Yeah. Creating poetry, you said, with her mouth? Um, no, portraits or like uh, uh, picture drawings. Painting. Paintings, sorry. Yes. <laughs> That's amazing. So you're going to feature her possibly because of the, the work that you're doing can support her work. As well, as well, yeah. Excellent. Um, that's So who's your ideal client? Let's say someone's listening to this and they want to get involved and let's say maybe even work with you as a consultant or bring in your product or service to their hospital or how, how would they get involved with that? Who's your ideal client, your typical client? Well, ideally, it will be a person that has exactly those challenges in life right now uh, with either multiple sclerosis, spinal cord injuries, um, and wants to try out something new, wants to benefit from this kind of innovation and technology that is available and um, is out there right now. So... Um, I think that's that's the ideal user in the end. And then the ideal customer, I would say, is, um, yeah, anyone working in the medical field, like be it either at the rehabilitation hospital or with the insurance um, or with uh, a dealer for medical products or um, medical supply stores, all of that could help us to, you know, understand more the market in the U.S., for example. Um, and also get more people onto this and spread the message more. So you can help a lot of people all across the medical field. So that's amazing. I always like to tap into that hustle that we have when we're starting a new startup and you guys have 
founded in 2017. What's something scrappy you did to hustle that maybe you couldn't reveal in the very beginning? Uh, you patched something together, but now you're a little bit further along. You're able to reveal something scrappy you did to hustle. So we, we found it in uh, March 2018. Before that, we were on the stealth mode, um, being funded by the government in Germany. And during that time, <laughs> you couldn't even look at our prototype. So the, the hardware part of it, the adapter was really in like a box where you have those, I don't know, it's like it was a transparent box. And we took that actual box and like put some like a sticker on top of it with like a very crappy name. That's actually a funny story. So our name when we started this in, in university was glass chair. Now, it's just like a combination of smart glass and wheelchair. And we put mm. it together to become glass chair. But glass chair. we did a really, <laughs> we did a really funny thing with our logo because we took like the G of glass chair was kind of a wheelchair with a person sitting in a wheelchair. And it was like the G and the L, but in the end, people oh, were yeah. reading the G and the L and they were reading ass chair in the end. So there were some <laughs> funny stories. Because <laughs> that looked more like the icon rather than the letters of the word glass. Exactly. <laughs> oh, wow. That is hilarious. <laughs> so you didn't learn that until you got some feedback from customers and you're like, okay, it, we need to rebrand. Yeah. It took us like, I think like six months to realize that. So <laughs> Six months to realize that. And then how did you come up with Munivo? Oh, that, that's a whole another story. So we're very desperate to change our name. Uh, we're trying to figure out, you know, is there a website? Uh, is there a trademark still possible and all of that? And we're like, even like one of our CTOs came up with uh, a software that will like, we will just put in like random like names and the software will calculate then in the end, some random name put together with all those words. Yeah. Um, but it didn't help. Like every, every time there was something with like the website wasn't available or the trademark was not available or, 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 um, and then we we were very desperate we wanted to then like just come together get drunk and see if this this would help us with like becoming more creative and just before we were doing that somebody came up with the idea munich new innovation and evolution and that somehow clicked because we were like having like random words around the board right munich new and evolution exactly mu ni vo exactly <laughs> Boom. so you just had a little priming with some alcohol yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to get the conversation started i get it we did also celebrate that a lot then after we finally had it website uh, trademark all of that was was safe congrats there's actually a company called name licks like name l-i-x and it's an ai brand name generator for so you're <laughs> Sounds like your team member was ahead of his time. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> it's becoming more and more popular. All right, we're going to transition into something called the under 30 seconds round. So I'm going to fire off a few questions, answer them as fast as you can. As soon as you uh, think of it, just share it, okay? All right. Let it come out as fast as possible. First okay. thing that comes to mind. Number one. What is the book you've gifted more often than any other book and why? Yuval Noah Harari, all three, like, uh, all three series of it, because like, it's something that everyone has to read in order to like, create or get a greater picture of it, of everything. That's the second time this has been recommended. So Sapiens, and what, yeah. which is the first one? The second one? Homo Deus and uh, 21st Lessons from, for the 21st Century. And of the three, which one's your favorite so far? The first one, yeah. Homo sapiens, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> great, great book. I love that one. And number two, what's one of the best and one of the worst investments you've ever made and why? Um, best investments is to, to actually start this company. Uh, worst investments, um, whoa. Ah, yeah, well, I, I did play around with some like ETFs and so on. And like at some point, like I, I won a lot, I lose a lot. I, I didn't <laughs> have time to, like to like really 
put myself into really more like advanced mode and like learn more. So that was like the, the worst investment that I did. Yeah. And investing can be like a full time job. Um, exactly. So if you're not focused on it full time, you can end up possibly losing more than you win. I have That's a good what... friend now that is like taking care of that. So I'm, I'm set now. Yeah. <laughs> it's more I, advanced. Than... <laughs> I felt the same way. I wanted something that I could, you know, simply use while I'm focused on my other things. So that's how I came across Wealthfront. I love it. It's, um, they use algorithms to help you invest in your portfolio. Oh, so nice. you don't have to, they're smarter um, at this than I am. So uh, it's kind of like focus on, what I've learned is focus on what you're best at, outsource the rest. There's people that do this as a full-time job. And so it's a, it's an amazing exactly. app. I've been using it for over three years and I've had higher returns on that than any other investments I've, I've used so far. So nice. That's what I would recommend. All right. Number three, what's one of your guilty pleasures or favorite cheat meals? Oh, my favorite cheat meal. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Whoa. There's so many cheat meals. Like, do you remember Amsterdam? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> a so, lot of cheat so, meals. So those like uh, kind of like, you know, partying out all night and then like going to like, I don't know, a uh, kebab store burger or whatever and like eating that. That's one of the, the cheat you meals. You have a favorite one in America? What's your favorite cheat meal in, in the U.S.? Oh, the last time I've been to, the, to New York, we ate a really great falafel there and that is amazing. Like with all the tahina and hummus. Oh, and yes. wow. That's what I'm having uh, right after this, actually. <laughs> for the longest time, I was always afraid of falafel because I never knew what it was. And so I think, you know, growing up, I wasn't exposed to falafel as much as I should have been. And then when I found out it was chickpeas, I was like, oh, I love chickpeas. <laughs> <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> so, and I'm Greek and Italian, so I should have known these things. Yeah, exactly. All right. Pretend you won the Peter Thiel Fellowship and you were going to get money to start a business instead of going to college. What's the first thing you would do to start your business? Uh, wait, so you mean like a completely new idea or like? Uh... Yes. Like, let's say you didn't even start this yet. You're thinking about going to college, but instead of going to college, you get funding to start a business. What's the very first thing you would do to start a business? Try to find a mentor. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Coach, a coach, a mentor, someone that can help guide you because they've likely been there before. Exactly. And they can help guide you and act as an unbiased third party, give you advice along the way. Act as a sounding board. Yeah. And number five, last one. What's something you never knew you needed? Something that I never knew. Get, so an example I like to bring up is this pop socket on my <laughs> iPhone. My buddy recommended it. I he's like, just try it for a week. I swear. Just try it. And I he's like, if you don't like it, take it off after that. And now I'm wondering how did I ever use an iPhone without a pop <laughs> without <socket>? it? <laughs> Game changer. <laughs> well, I, I don't have that, but let me think. I don't know, like Damn, it's hard. I would just, just right now, like I, I thought that during Corona, um, you know, like I, when I was small, I was using, you know, you were outside playing with the ball, like playing soccer, playing football, playing whatever. Then at some point, like I kind of like, when I moved now to the new apartment, I didn't bring all that stuff with me. And uh, like, I'm really desperate to, to finding a ball to play like, you know, some <laughs> soccer <laughs> or like, I don't know, baseball or whatever. Mm. And so I didn't knew that I was so dependent on these kind of like, you know, things that you need to like, you know, spend some nice time, throw some balls, kick some, kick some balls, whatever. Finally, now we, we found a Frisbee and like we're, we're throwing some Frisbees around. So that's also something that I couldn't imagine. I would be <laughs> so happy to do <laughs> That's a great insight. It, it's we're like a yellow lab puppy. It's like we just got to get that energy out. And when you yeah. keep us cooped up for too long, we uh, we might use that energy in a negative way rather than something that could contribute or add value. Well, 
Uh, Claudio, congratulations on the success. This is really exciting. Um, thank you so much for being here today. But before you go, what's, what's next for you? What's the next big milestone or goal or bucket list item you want to achieve? Um, next big goal is, is really to, to start operations and being um, fully integrated in more healthcare systems around the world. Um, that's in terms of the, the professional side. In terms of the personal side, and and more like in in the um, in the global shapers, like we're trying right now to launch a worldwide project involving like more than twenty five hubs in our community to to scale the the upskilling initiative um, that we're doing right now with the refugees, um, which is also another part of a, even a bigger, greater goal of the World Economic Forum to upskill, I think, over 1 million people um, with backgrounds, uh, refugees and migration, um, because I really think that more and more people um, will need the skills, the digital skills to go the next step into their uh, next career move or their next career step. Um, so I'm really looking forward to the next, like, you know, meeting sessions and involving more and more people from different countries around the world. Uh, so that's really like, yeah, exciting. And you're, you're in Munich right now and you actually, um, are thinking about moving to New York and yes. that's delayed a bit. <laughs> what was the impetus for that? Why do you want to move to New York? Um, first of all, like we, we, we already have so many people like, um, from the U S like reaching out to us, writing us on our website, writing us emails. Um, I actually been there already and promoting it once during the Forbes, uh, Detroit summit. Um, mm -hmm. that was the first time that we've been there and like showed the, the, the solution and we met Ryan and Ryan has basically no arms, no legs. He is in a wheelchair. He has some special joystick somehow. So he can really like drive around with this wheelchair. And we really just bumped into each other. And, uh, and he was like, so, so amazed again, inspiring. He's a motiva motivational speaker for like small children with also diseases wow. and disabilities. Um, and, and that created again, like another like momentum somehow. And like he said, like, guys, you have to come to the US. This is, you know, like, this is the shit. Um, we need this here. Exactly. And like, and yeah, and I was like, really like, trying to like, do things, talk to people, do that, and so on. And then unfortunately, like, um, coronavirus started. And then like, yeah, everything is like, so that shut delayed down. the launch. Yeah. So, so what's the next step to getting you here, um, you're going to come after Corona and then what would it take for you to actually launch in the U S are you going to oh, set yeah. up an office here? How does that work? Yeah. So we're going to set up a legal entity. Um, then we have to figure out the tax thing with Germany and the U S because there's some implications there to be dealt with. And then finally, we already have everything prepared for our FDA uh, approval. Uh, we just need to like file everything, have a meeting um, with the FDA, talk this through. And then after that, everything is already set. We have already some uh, distributors and some wheelchair manufacturers that want to support with distribution and market entry. Um, so then it's just really executing. So you heard it first, ladies and gentlemen, if you or someone you know has a wheelchair, or is in the medical field and can help Claudio and his team at Manivo get into the US, um, you know who to call, who to reach out to, what's the best website or URL to go to for them to connect with you? And then where do listeners go to connect with you directly? So best uh, URL is www.munivo.com. That's uh, where you find most of the information. M-U-N-E-V-O. M-U-N. EVO exactly <laughs> and then for connecting with me just like uh, find me on LinkedIn and connect with me there perfect great please go connect with Claudio ladies and gentlemen and by the way you just reminded me there's another motivational speaker actually from Tampa Florida he speaks on stage with Tony Robbins very well known and he is also known for some of the um, you know inspiration he's given because he has some disabilities with his arms and legs so i think he'd be great to reach out to it i was just looking up his name because i want to pronounce it properly and i think it's nick santino stasso 
So I'll send it to you after this, but I feel like he would be a huge champion for your services and product. And so I would love to uh, try and connect you guys and really have a big launch here in the US. Yes, yes, (laughs) very much appreciated. (laughs) We learned a lot here today. We learned how you can grow and scale a company in multiple countries. And we learned uh, an inspiring story of how you can empower people, not just for your own company, but he's doing it for refugees through World Economic Forum, Global Shapers. Um, I hope this episode helped you as much as it helped me. Have an amazing day and thank you so much, Claudio. Thank you so much, Phil. It was great talking to you. Likewise, my pleasure. All right. Thanks for joining us today. I hope this episode helped you as much as it helped me. Who do you think would benefit from hearing it? You can make an impact on their life by sharing it now. Before you go, I encourage you to tell us your favorite part of the episode in the review section. Now it's time to level up. Level up.